I've been getting a lot of questions lately about my layout views and how I program them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make toggle buttons on the layout view. To get the most out of this video, you should probably have a pretty firm grasp on how to assign macros to the layout view and uh, how to work with the command line in copying things to different places. So I've set up a programming window for this layout view to kind of give you a better idea of what exactly is going on behind the scenes. And these images are just images that I've made in Photoshop with, you know, basic just text editor and uh, adding a green square around the outside. So these images were all done in Photoshop prior and then just imported into the MA image pool. Each one of the buttons that you see in the layout view is just a macro. So when you're clicking on the button, it is actually just a macro that is firing a command. In this case, we are only triggering a, a go command for each of these executors we see up here in yellow. So to make this work, we need to have a sequence for each of these buttons that has at least two cues. In my example here, I am using an on cue and an off cue for each of these um, each of these buttons. So we can see if I right click to edit my stage aerial macro, it is just saying uh, go executor 13.151. And that executor is uh, this one uh, right above here. So if we take a peek at this sequence, we can see it's just two cues. Uh, first one named on, second one named off. So we're going to store all of our programming uh, fixture data that we want to trigger during this queue in, into this on queue. So this is where we would change our lights, program them how we want, and then we would store merge into queue number one here for this, uh, for this button to work. Uh, and then we can see the magic really happens over in this uh, command section, right? So uh, each queue can have multiple commands in the command line here. Um, in the command line section of the uh, of the sequence editor. So when we hit that macro, it is not only triggering queue number one, um, like in the original macro, it's also triggering this command, which says copy image 277 at image 231 slash O for slash overwrite. It prevents a little pop-up from popping up and interrupting the macro. So let's see what that does. Copy image 277 at 231. So if we look into our image pool down here, we're going to see uh, image 277 down in the lower left-hand corner here at image 231, which is the first slot here. So to do this, uh, to, to kind of have this toggle work, you need to think of it like this. Um, you'll need at least um, three slots or three, uh, three images for each button that you want um, to have on the layout view. And the reason for that is we are copying from one of two states. So we have the on state for the button, the off state for the button, and then the placeholder uh, button, right? So this is like the placeholder image. So this first row is like all placeholders. And then we are copying images to that placeholder so that they show up on the screen here. Because this macro, um, it just knows that its image is this uh, the first image, which is uh, image 231. So the, the layout view is constantly just referencing image 231 right here. And this is image 232, so on and so forth. So um, if, and I can just do this manually here, I say copy the aerial on image at the slot, please, it'll pop up and then I'll say, oh, I want to overwrite it. And then we can see I manually just changed the image right there. But we want to be able to do that with the cues here. So that's, uh, that's what these two, uh, the two cues are for. And since the, the macro is just a go command, it's going between Q1 and Q2. And Q2 is just the off command that kills the executor right after it copies the image. So you can see there's actually two commands in the command um, command section of this queue. So at first it copies, and then there is a separator of a semicolon. Um, that's how you run two commands um, in one line without having to do a macro. Um, you just separate it with that semicolon, and then that 
copies the image back to its off state, and then kills the executor. You can also add timing to this as well. So for example, the haze burst, um, it's the same exact story except the trigger for the off executor is time instead of go. And it lasts for 20 seconds. And then it does the same thing in the command section. It copies that image back. So once that 20 seconds expires here, we'll see that the image will flip back to off and the executor offs. So there you have it. That's how I create these toggle buttons. Uh, it's really good for club installs and places where you want to make kind of an easy interface for the user to understand. Or it just looks really cool when you post uh, photos on Instagram when you're at a festival, right? Thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay subscribed for future videos just like this. And thanks so much for watching and happy programming.